is your acting sometimes just a little bit beige? Now, I know that comedian Billy Connolly uses that term, that colour, as an insult. He thinks it's the most boring, uninteresting colour. But, you know, there are some useful things about beige. It's neutral. It's uh, every day. Um, it doesn't confront you. So there are some good things about it. But in this 34th Talking Acting, what I want to focus on is what are the things that lead an actor towards being beige and what can you do about it? Because I suspect that the first thing that, that leads an actor to having a kind of nondescript performance outcome is that their focus is on being real. Now, sure, being real is an important ingredient of acting, isn't it? If you're not real, well, <clears throat> who's going to want to watch you and, and, and where will that take them if they don't find you believable? So sure, being real is a significant component of your acting process, <clears throat> but it's not the only component. And the deal is that if you're being real, but you're not delivering the story, then your chances of engaging your audience are not high. So you need to be able to do both. Those are the two jobs for an actor, isn't it? Be believable and deliver the story. So you can be absolutely real, but not very engaging because it's story that's going to engage your audience. And story engages your audience because that's where your character is dealing with a difficulty and a difficulty that's driving the story. So if you want to avoid being beige, then surely the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you are clear about what's the, the key difficulty in the story. So getting that sorted is first base. When you've got that in place, then the thing that actually helps that engage your audience and, 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 uh, and bring a, a purposeful energy to your performance is that you step up on your lines, that each line is more important than the last because that tells the audience that you are both engaged with resolving the difficulty and what's more, you are constantly working at it. So if you're doing that, they're going to want to know whether you succeed or fail. So stepping up is something that's going to bring stronger colours and a clear sense of purpose to what you're doing. And the next thing that you could work on is making sure that you're character in the scene um, is, is noticeably different, a different type to other characters in the scene because if, if the characters in the scene um, are, are contrasting, <laughs> then um, you, you will have more elements to listen to because you've got <clears throat> different patterns of behaviour that are going to bring a different subtextual um, uh, element, purpose, to your listening. And so if characters are tending to be the same type, then the exchange between them is ordinary. The greater difference between them, the more extra ingredients there are to play with because that difference will drive your listening. And... The next thing I think is really important to do to bring stronger colours to your character and stop them being beige is give your character a sense of humour. Because when your character has a sense of humour, 
even in intensely dramatic scenes, they will see the irony that's at play in the world. And that will bring another level of complexity and a greater variety of colour to what you're doing. So um, stepping up on lines, making sure that there's a diverse range of characters in the scene and giving your character a sense of humour so that you have brighter colours to play with are three tools that will help you move away from everyday boring into an energised and focused and colourful performance. I'll be talking acting the same time next week. Cheers. If you have a question about this unique approach to acting process, you can email Richard at rehearsalroom.com. Make a booking for a free 30-minute chat. Or download the e-book. It's free too.